8100 start cars uh, chambers belt down area for officer's truck 4283 start EMS as well unknown injury at this time Attention all units, St. Louis County is announcing the final roll call for St. Louis County Detective Antonio Antoine Valentine. The men and women of the St. Louis County Police Department are forever grateful and proud to have served with Detective Antonio Valentine. We will never forget his ultimate sacrifice. Detective Valentine, may you rest in peace and protect us from above, knowing that your strength lives on in your family. Your legacy carries on through your children, Jalen, Alicia, Tony, and Victoria, and your honor will continue with all of us. Detective Valentine was a cherished member of the St. Louis County Police Department, and he will never be forgotten. Arriving to the airport is a little of, of a nerves to it. Everyone was there making sure everybody was booked in, boarding passes and everything. And, but then you have the sense of the reason why you're there, the reason why you're going to DC, the, the reason why you're representing the department. Um, and then the unknown of what to expect, because I never experienced police week. I never had to experience. You, you witness other law enforcement uh, line of duty deaths, but you never, it never been this close to home. It was a little bit uh, heavy, and you gotta remember that we're getting on a plane there, and uh, you know uh, Tony's not with us, so a lot of uh, different emotions. I'm not a real emotional person, so having to deal with that was a little different for me. And I saw uh, Victoria, which is uh, V's youngest daughter. She comes up, give me a big hug, and then, you know, she's just as happy as ever, smiling. So we got a couple donuts, and then we got to the boarding area, and we sat and played Uno. From that point, that's when it kind of, you, you block everything out, you zone everything out, and you're able to have that kind of woo moment where you could just really relax and chill with her. And it was a good feeling, but then you get back in that world of that nerves, like, all right, well, what to expect when we get there? I just remember arriving at DC and then us coming off the plane and then you saw the amount of support. When we get to the airport in DC, there was a line, there was like two lines of like officers lined up um, saluting us. Funny story, I actually walked past it all. I did not recognize it. I thought that there was something else more important going on than what was happening. Yeah, no, I, I got off earbuds on and walked straight past and then found out much later that that was supposed to be for me, so. Uh, we got a police escort running cold to the hotel, which I felt was a little excessive, but uh, it's okay. You know, just running cold to get to the hotel, hey, we appreciate it, but in St. Louis, that would have definitely been a complaint. <laughs> Going to the uh, the police memorial wall is the wall where all of the uh, names of the fallen officers uh, were memorialized at. Uh, it was kind of overwhelming when I first saw it. You know, you you see the pictures on the internet, you know, maybe on a TV commercial or something like that. But actually, to see it uh, up close was uh, definitely overwhelming at first. You know, so many officers have sacrificed, given all to this profession. You almost be like, wow, it's a lot of officers that was killed in the line of duty. You don't, you don't understand that it's that many officers that was killed in the line of duty. There's so many different mixed emotions when you walk in there. You could walk past a family that's happy, that's celebrating, walk past a family that's crying their eyes out. When you walk through, it's like a um, circular shape. And you walk through and you just see the amount of names, the amount of flowers. And it just seemed like it's never ending. I was confused what the wall was. I thought they were talking about like the wall of China or something. I was really confused. And then somebody actually told me, I was like, oh, okay, let's go see it. I got down there and I got to scratch out his name with my sister. We talked about it and I think it was, it's a lot to just even, not just to see it, but to touch the carving of his name was, you could feel it go through your body that it was just a full rush of emotions. To know that that's never, that'll never go away, that's always there. 
and that it'll be forever. Anytime I want to go back or any, anybody else can go and just see it and it's never going to move. And then we finally got to sit down and color and then we made a bunch. Some were like light and some were dark, some were colorful. It was really fun though to draw dad's name. We're there for Antonio, but there are other people who are there for other officers who uh, also sacrifice everything. And just being uh, next to those people's families and hearing their stories and being able to share Tony's story with them, it was very special. Uh, a lot of officers that I've counseled and talked to, uh, they say, Sarge, uh, I can't believe it happened. Speaking with a lot of them here today, uh, some of them are still saying the same thing, even though they're here in Washington, D.C., and they see his picture memorialized here. Uh, it's hard to believe he's gone. I know it's hard for me to believe he's gone. Uh, we lost a good officer, a good man, and he'll never be forgotten. You know, a lot of people are still healing and still coping and, and dealing with that raw emotion. Because I remember Alicia even told me when, um, because it was a point that you know, she didn't know she wanted to go. Because it's, it, takes, it's, it takes a toll. If it takes a toll on just me being a friend, what do you think it takes a toll on his daughter? And you know, constantly have to remember she, and I'll never forget these words she said, you know, I was getting to the point where I was not over it, but I was getting to a good place. But now coming back here or seeing this or seeing the uniform and seeing you guys is bringing that emotion back up. And it was tough for her to, to, to face that. Walking into the wall for the first time was a little overwhelming because it's only been since December. So I've been like four or five months now. It was a heartbreaking moment because I would never imagine his name being on the wall. Um, he's always been there for us. And now when I mean us, I mean his family, his friends, his kids. So just to know that he's gone and not there anymore, it's, it's a heartbreaking. It's, it kind of takes a toll on a lot of us to know that your best friend is gone. It, it's sad for the reason that his name is there, but it's, it's a good feeling to know that his name made it there. So I, I, was, I was in a mix of emotions between the two. Uh, you know, it was like a, one of those where you, you shed some tears and you also have a smile on your face to know, because all you want to do is tell them that like, hey, you, you know, you did whatever you did in life when you worked, you did it right and you're, you're here now. And you, you know, your name rests with all these other amazing officers who did it right and that sadly lost their lives in the line. It, it seems cool. Like, oh wow, like, what? At, at the same time, it's like, I don't want it to be there. One of the interesting things about this memorial is the fact that it seems that the names are added in an almost random fashion. Every name is accounted for, and it's relatively easy to look up the names on the wall to find someone specifically that you're looking for. But they're not grouped together by states, they're not grouped together by cities, they're not even grouped together by dates. What unites them is that they were added to the wall uh, in the same time at the same year. So what it does is it brings people together from all kinds of departments, from all parts of the United States, and they stand in front of the wall in the memorial and they, they look at the name of their loved one and they start engaging in conversation with people who basically have the same experience, the same experience of loss. And it brings them all together. It's a, it's a shared grief, but it's a very powerful moment. And just, just being here and walking the memorial and reminding us who in our department is memorialized on this wall is very important but it also brings in contact with everyone else who basically is in the same situation
the next block, we gotta go around. <laughs> Scenario for like a slow clap. Tato. Um, walking into the candlelight vigil was, it, it was a lot. They, I mean, there's officers lined up on both sides, all the way down. It was very supportive and it was very caring moments all the way up until the end of the event. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming who's we were keeping track of the names and seeing like all the people who stood up around us and just being there for other people was cool it was one of those moments where you stood there and you just you look forward and you hear the name and it once again rush of emotions come through you From the state of Missouri, John Richard Bullard Jr. As they're reading the names John off, Baker, you know, it hits you like, Evans, this is this is real. Matthew, the names that they're reading Davis, off are officers who, you know, Dennis, paid the ultimate sacrifice. Bennett, and you look around and it's just thousands and thousands of candles lit Raymond, and it's, it's moving. Antonio Antoine Valentine Sr. The process of lighting the candles, where they started at the front, I believe, with one candle, and just pass it all the way through, just to share that, that same light with everybody, man. It was uh, meant a whole lot to us. Once the candles are lit, and they're all standing together, and everyone's together as one, that was probably one of the most uh, intense feelings of the entire trip. Wow, that's a lot of candles. I was like, oh my gosh, they almost look like stars. That was something to see. That was powerful. I was glad that, um, I was glad that Alicia and, and the kids got to uh, experience that, though. Tony's passing is going to have, a, have an effect on all of us, you know, for, for a long time. At least I was able to, you know, grieve with my friends. Please carefully extinguish your candles at this time. Yes. Sorry. 2003, 2004 were our first trips up here. Uh, we missed 2005, but every year since 2006, uh, we've attended events at National Police Week and our participation and abilities and things that we do up here, uh, responsibility-wise, has grown uh, significantly. We have an opportunity uh, you know, to meet bagpipers and drummers from all over the United States. Uh, coming up here, participating in the candlelight vigil, uh, and things like the event that we're doing today, the National Conference of Law Enforcement Emerald Society's March. Um, we get to meet police officers from all over the country and develop relationships and friendships. And, you know, they're here to honor their fallen officers. We're here to honor and remember our fallen officers and the families. That's really the reason why we're here. It's just a very humbling and, and experience, and it, it gives all of us, I believe, a sense of pride and devotion in, in what we do, providing music. Uh, for the families and, and, and for our peers, really. Um, it, it means a lot to us that uh, it, it's part of who we are uh, as, a, as a community and as a family in law enforcement. Capitol Hill ceremony. We all got dressed up in our class A's, decided we were gonna walk over to the ceremony and that's what we did. We wanted to uh, take as much time to get there as possible. We get to the grounds there, the Capitol building is in the backdrop and then you 
realize that this is going to be a huge experience. Yeah, it's just one of those December moments. You you see her smile, you see her laugh. She'll tell a joke every now and then. Then she'll start to cry, and she'll laugh and joke. She start to cry, and you just kind of let her let her let her go through the emotion, let her rock through whatever she feels. And these kids are experiencing something at a very young age that most adults have a difficult time handling, right? And then on this level of stuff of uh, being in this setting. It just shows how tough these kids are. These kids are incredible. You could tell these are, they are Valentines. We, we were told that there might be somebody special there to talk, and we hadn't really known. And then when the president came out, it was amazing that he would come out and speak on behalf of all of these fallen officers. I thought, oh, like, oh, it's not the president. They're just joking. And then we actually saw him. I was like, oh my gosh, it actually is the president. I was like, oh, he kind of looks fake. I don't know if that is the president. And then he started talking, and I was like, oh my gosh, that is the president. I can't believe I just met the president. During that time, me and him actually got to sit and talk, just about anything, about you know him and his dad. But what was interesting when I was sitting there talking to him, you see uh, V mannerisms in him. Like, uh, if you were talking to V and he, he, you said something that he agreed with, or you said something that He'll, he'll point at you like, and he'll do like this. But Jalen would do the same thing. Like you see like, almost as like a mini him. And it was kind of like almost talking to, to V. Much like the uh, candlelight vigil, get the reading of the names again. It went state by state. Shout out to the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. They were there with us. Got to the state of Missouri and we, Chief got us in the formation. You know, you're gonna stand there one last time and uh, pay your respects, and uh, we wanted to do it the right way. They read all of the Missouri names, all the way up until uh, we got to Tony again, and uh, it hit home a little bit. Antonio A. Valentine Sr. Once we broke formation, ceremony came to a close, got together for some uh, pretty nice uh, photos. Man, what a, what a good way to end the day there, you know. Bernard Waddell. I was happy that she was there. And, and just to understand that the impact that your dad has, you, you should see this. You feel this, understand the support. After the Capitol Hill event, a memorial, uh, Victoria wanted a piece of party at the hotel, just everyone together. So everyone was there, street team, the chief, uh, family. It was a good time. It was joyous because it was laughter. Like it was, we were sitting in the lobby, you had one group just sitting playing cards, you had another group just sitting talking, laughing, you had group eating, and you had family members there. And it was felt like a true group of, just finally to the point where everybody was happy. And it felt good just to, all right, let's just chill. Well, we hadn't seen each other for a day or two because we were so busy doing everything because it was a few days that we were really busy. And then we finally just sat down and had pizza together and we got to go out to ice cream and we just hung out. Uh, good laughs, a couple cries. And we also, I got to learn personally more about what happened on the day of his passing. And it was a fun and good moment with all of us, but it was also uh, important and special to share with each other. It brought out a lot of emotions and a lot of conversations. Again, I, I didn't get much pizza. I did way more talking than I, I probably ever did in my life. We were very appreciative that uh, some of Tony's family showed up and they shared their experience with us. We were able to sit down, have some pizza, have some laughs, share some memories, stories I never heard of them. It was, it was family time is what it was.
So at the conclusion of the national ceremony, the uh, wreath that all the family members place their flowers into gets brought here to the memorial and will be remain under guard until midnight tonight uh, by honor guard members. Uh, it is our honor this afternoon to uh, pipe the wreath to its final resting place as it were here at the memorial. Right, slow, up. keep the wreath there. It's guarded till midnight. Midnight comes, the Long Piper relieves the guard. Dave did a great job. We just walked through that whole place and just set the, the tone for the week. Ended it on a good note. We all caravaned over there walking. Uh, we had a special treat for Tony. I definitely think it's a good idea for officers to come out and experience this because, you know, when you lose somebody that, you know, that you're uh, friends with, that you're close with, uh, especially in the type of job that we do, uh, it's always good, you know, to, you know, kind of get that off your chest. Like, you don't want to, uh, you know, harbor those, those sad feelings It's part of that healing process. So it's a roller coaster for, for everybody. And I'm sure it's extremely for the family also. I forget the lady said, hey, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's, it's gonna be a roller coaster of emotions for the whole week. And she, yes, she was truly right on that one. Golden Spike is just an award reward we came up with. I got promoted, I got a left team in Golden Spike. A couple of other guys left to move on to other assignments. Golden Spike, Tony's moving on. Golden Spike. Just a piece of uh, our spike strips from one that we used. I had the dubious honor of walking it over to him. And I crawl up on the wall and I left it uh, entangled in a wreath there. It was a good way for me to recognize that I have to grieve too, and uh, we all do. It gave you a chance to understand that you, you're not alone. We can lean on each other. It's weird in a way because when you get back from DC, you realize the job goes on. You have to continue. 
Um, so that's a little bit tough because you, you start to remember that we still got a job to do and then they're going to fill his position. So those type of thoughts go through your head when, you, when you're done with the event. It's almost like after a funeral, it's like, well, that's it. You know, then it's over with. You move. You got to move on. So that's tough in a way, but then I just want to make sure I did my job as a friend to say, hey, I can hold the family down or I'm here for support or representation for him. Behind me, you can see all of the walls are actually engraved, but there's a section here that you're gonna see a blank wall. There's gonna be any no, no names or anything on it. And I asked the uh, guy who was in charge, I says, what are those for? And he said, those are for the officers to come. <laughs> 